Hey guys, take out your review packet and let's turn to the page that says mitosis and meiosis right here at the, of the page. Now remember, mitosis and meiosis are both going to be happening inside of our cells and they're an example of cell division. So first up we have mitosis. Mitosis produces identical copies. When we're talking about identical copies, we mean that they have the same number and the same types of chromosomes. So they are going to be clones of each other. If we're talking about human cells, the types of human cells that are capable of undergoing this are called body cells. Body cells have a full and complete set of chromosomes. So we call this the 2N number. Meaning one cell would have 46, it goes and divides into two cells, and now those two cells also have 46 chromosomes. Mitose specifically associated with asexual reproduction. So our body cells, but single celled organisms also undergo this process. The next one is meiosis. Remember, whenever we see meiosis, we're talking about sex cells. And the two types of sex cells that we know are sperm and egg. Now sex cells have half the normal number of chromosomes. We're always going to represent that half the normal number of chromosomes with an N. So we have a sperm cell that has N number of chromosomes. If we're looking at humans, that means that it has 23 chromosomes. If we're looking at an egg cell, an egg number of chromosomes. When those two chromosomes, sorry, when those two cells meet, now you have restored the chromosome number. So that would be the 2N number. Remember, sex cells can also be called gametes, and the process of meiosis leads to variation. This is why you and your siblings are different, because you got half your genes from your mom, half your genes from your dad. Every time a sex cell is made, they're going to have a different combination of genes. Meiosis, since it makes sex cells, is going to be used in sexual reproduction. All right, once you have that all written down, let's flip over to the next page. And here we're going to talk about both asexual and sexual reproduction. First up is asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction only requires one parent. That means sperm and egg is not coming together for these ones. Types of organisms that can undergo asexual reproduction include bacteria, certain types of plants like vegetative propagation, um, another example we talked about was budding, when you had a hydra and a little buddy comes off of the side. Remember, these are all clones of one another. There's no variation. They're identical. If you were to see a picture of asexual reproduction, what you would see is one cell dividing into two cells. Remember, the A is negating it. That's why we're saying no sex. And really, we're talking about the fact that there are no sex cells, so no sperm and no egg. The next thing we're going to talk about is human reproduction. Human reproduction is going to be regulated by hormones. Remember, hormones are specific proteins that our body is going to be making. Males and females release different types of hormones. So we have males, and they're usually associated with testosterone. And then we have females, who are usually associated with estrogen. You might also see females associated with progesterone, LH, or FSH. Now the two pictures below represent the male and female reproductive systems. Make sure you know these from both the front and the side view. The picture on the left is the male reproductive system. The picture on the right represents the female reproductive system. We're going to start off by looking at the female reproductive system. 
the female reproductive system has these different organs associated with them. The first one is going to be the ovaries. The ovaries produce eggs by that process of meiosis that we looked at on the previous page. Remember, meiosis makes sex cells. It also is responsible for making the hormone estrogen. Additionally, let's label the diagram. These two circles on either side of the female reproductive system, those are going to be called ovaries. Next up, we have our fallopian tube. Remember, inside of the fallopian tube, that's going to be where fertilization takes place. Fertilization is when sperm and egg meet up. When they meet up, they produce a zygote. A zygote is really just a fancy word for fertilized egg. Now that there are two N chromosomes, we can say that we've restored the chromosome number. Let's refer back up to our picture and label where the fallopian tube is. There are actually two fallopian tubes. Also remember, this is going to be where fertilization, meaning sperm and egg, meet up. The next part of the reproductive system is going to be the uterus. The uterus is where the fetus develops. A lot of times people want to say baby, but remember at this point it's not technically a baby, so the word that we want to use is fetus. Also mitosis and differentiation takes place here. This is a concept that we're going to go over again on the bottom. Mitosis just means that the cells are splitting, making identical copies, and differentiation is when each cell in your body gets a specialized job. If we're looking at our image again, the uterus is going to be the large structure in the center. And that has a large muscle, which is going to be responsible for helping to hold the baby, the fetus rather, and then eventually push the fetus out. Last thing for the female reproductive system is the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle total is 28 days. Remember, when we say 28 days, we don't mean that a woman is bleeding for 28 days. We mean from when a woman gets her period to the next time she gets her period, that's going to be 28 days. And this whole process is represented, or regulated rather, by your hormones. Hormones like estrogen, progesterone, FSH, and LH. The day when females are considered the most fertile is going to be on or about day 14. That's because that's the day that ovulation occurs. Ovulation is when females release a mature egg from the ovary. The next body system we have to deal with is the male reproductive system. The male reproductive system makes sperm. And the place where it's going to make sperm is going to be in the testes. Just like the eggs, sperm is made through the process of meiosis. The male hormone is called testosterone. The testes, if we're looking at the picture, are going to be the two circles on either side of the male reproductive system. Remember, we want to use the appropriate science terms for each of these. Next up, we have the vas deferens. The vas deferens are tubes through which sperm travels. If you were to get a vasectomy, you actually still make sperm. It just doesn't get released from the body. What a vasectomy is, is going to be when they go and they cut the vas deferens. So the testes still function, meaning you still make sperm, you still make testosterone, just sperm is unable to travel out of the body. The next part of the male reproductive system is going to be the glands. The glands provide nourishment for the sperm also a liquid environment. 
The important thing to note is that this liquid environment is actually semen. Sometimes people get confused and want to say that it's sperm, but that's not the correct term. Let's label each of the glands. The types of glands are things like the prostate gland, the seminal vesicle, but you're not going to be responsible for knowing their specific names. You do need to know, though, that they make semen, and semen is the liquid that the sperm are going to travel in. Next up, we're going to talk about embryonic development. It's almost a guarantee that there is going to be some picture that looks similar to this. It might not be the entire picture, it might just be tiny little segments. So over here, we have our sperm. Next to our sperm, we have our egg. These two are gonna be made by meiosis. Since they're made by meiosis, that means they have half the normal number of chromosomes, which is going to be represented by an N. When those two things come together, we call that fertilization. So when sperm and egg come together, now we have fertilization. Remember, fertilization is going to occur inside of the fallopian tubes. Those Fs go together. When you undergo fertilization, that's going to be when you restore your chromosome number. So now instead of having the n number of chromosomes, you have the 2n number of chromosomes. If we refer to the text below the picture, you'll see that we have gamete formation is going to go occur and then fertilization can occur and after fertilization you have differentiation. Gamete formation is really just another term for meiosis. One thing that's missing in our flow chart is between fertilization and differentiation, your cells are actually undergoing the process known as mitosis. That's why we're not just made up of one cell. We're made up of millions, billions, trillions of cells. Fertilization is when sperm and egg meet. They make this thing called a zygote. Remember a zygote, so once again, when we're talking about fertilization, that's going to be when sperm and egg meet and form a zygote. A zygote is just called a fertilized egg. Additionally, fertilized egg is now going to restore the chromosome number. What we mean by this is that you have N inside of the sperm, N inside of the egg, and now inside of that fertilized egg, or the zygote, you have 2N. The next step is going to be mitosis. Mitosis is going to be when a cell divides into an identical copy of itself, meaning that it makes a clone of itself. So every single cell after fertilization is going to have the same exact number of chromosomes. Here we have the 2N number of chromosomes, each of these are also going to have the 2n number of chromosomes, and then each one of these has the same 2n number of chromosomes. From C to E, each one of those cells is undergoing mitosis. Now remember, mitosis is occurring both in the fallopian tube and also inside of the uterus. All cells have identical DNA. The last step of this is going to be called differentiation. Remember, differentiation is going to be when these cells get specialized jobs. The main idea here is going to be that they have the same genes meaning the same exact DNA, but different genes are turned on or activated.
So every single cell in your body has the same exact genetic information, but what happens is that different genes are turned on, expressed, or activated. Differentiation is going to be represented by letter E. The last part that we need to know about is fetal development. Fetal development is talking about where the fetus is going to develop. The fetus develops inside of the uterus. So right here on this picture, where the fetus is, that's going to be the uterus. The other important structure that we want to know is going to be structure A. Structure A is pointing to this structure right there. That structure is referred to as the placenta. Remember, the placenta is going to allow for the diffusion of gases. So things like oxygen, carbon dioxide. It also is going to be responsible for diffusion of nutrients. That's how the baby, sorry, that's how the fetus is going to get food. Remember the fetus is not eating. Instead, the mother intakes food and then that food through diffusion, right after it's been digested, goes across the placenta and then the baby can get the nutrients that way. Also toxins and waste go here. That's why it's really important for the mother not to do things like drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes because that's going to be able to pass through that barrier. Another important thing to note is that between the mother and the fetus, there's no mixing of blood. Remember, if two blood types happen to mix, that could be when you have a clumping or clotting of blood and that can lead to death.